I only knew Jack in passing at our previous job. Uh, so our conversations were like 10 minutes max. Any more than 10 minutes, then we'd get into trouble. But um, what a fantastic human being Jack was. Um, absolute amazing person. I didn't know him as long as some people, and I wish I knew him more. But what I remember of Jack, and the first thing I remember, is his smile and his positive outlook on everything. There was there was never a um, there was never a bad word about anything or anyone that would come out of his mouth. Absolutely not. He had this. He had this way of like looking at things in a positive way it, it was extraordinary to me when he was explaining what he's gone through health wise and Jack would he would literally laugh and joke and have this really good outlook on it and that takes a special human being it takes a real special human being to do that most people have to work on that <laughs> you know every day for years with Jack that was just a natural thing for him unbelievable and it's such a shame it really is such a shame that he's gone because I. The, the more jacks that we have in the world, the better. Really. I'll, ne- I'll never forget his positivity, his outlook on life, you know, his smile, you know, his jokes. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. But he's never forgotten. He's never forgotten. I know. Hi, this is Roy, aka Big Boy Roy, aka Space Boy, Piggy's Riders and Motorhead. What can I tell you about Jack? Jack was. he was a mischievous little shit. There he was. Anything for a joke, anything for a laugh fantastic grin on his face all the time. I remember there was one time when we went out on a ride and we went down Manifold Valley. We were doing the tunnel run. You know what I mean? You give it a good rev bomb through the tunnel and whatever. And every we were all taking us turns going through this tunnel and everyone had gone through until there was only two people left. Me on my 1250 bandit. And we got Ethan on his 600 bandit. So Ethan was getting ready to go because we had the phone call saying, right, come on, start coming through. So anyway, Ethan goes to his bike, climbs on, goes for turning it on. No key, nothing. Well, Jack, oh Jack, he got this habit. He was always taking keys, but he couldn't hide it from anyone because he's face had always given him away that he was the one that did it anyway like I picked my phone up I said right Jack because we knew who it would be straight away right Jack Ethan wants his bloody keys and you're at the other end of the tunnel he says I don't know what you mean I don't know what you mean anyway Ethan's there he's getting a bit irate and whatever and it was Anyway, Jack eventually comes to him and says, they're on top where your cylinder head is. That dropped me laughing that day. I think it had everyone laughing. That was one of the, one of the really good rides we had. We've had some fantastic rides out with Jack. And I'm going to miss him. Everyone's going to miss him. He was an awesome lad. And he'll never, I, I guarantee you, he'll never be forgotten. I hope you're up there, Jack, riding high and smiling down on us. And if I can, I'm going to keep your tradition going. I'm going to become the Phantom Key Snatcher. Just for you, Jack. Just for you. Anyway, I'm going to go. I wish everyone out there a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Jack, you keep watching down on us. 
I think we're going to do a lot more rides and every time we ride you'll always be in our thoughts mate love you see you later Bye. See me using a full tank and red bombs. It's the only way you'd want it. Have you seen have you seen all the pictures on the sides of him, Luke? Look, all photos of him on the side of his coffin, Luke. Meant.
this world prematurely on June the 18th 1999 weighing in at a tiny two pound ten ounces from the moment he was born myself as his mum and Carly's dad knew what a fighter he was he battled for life and overcame so much in those weeks each day getting stronger Jack finally came home weighing just shy of three pound his dad and I overjoyed to finally have our son home Although we were in the middle of a heat wave, our tiny flat had to have the heating on full to maintain Jack's temperature. Unknown to us at that time, Jack was hiding a very complex heart condition. After numerous stays in hospital and tests, Jack underwent open heart surgery 
in February 2000 at only eight months old and then weighing only eight pound in weight. But again he battled through it and by then, only a few days later, his beautiful smile came back. Nothing got Jack down, no matter what was thrown at him. His sister Ellie came along in 2002 and he doted on her and George came along in 2006 and by then he was so proud of his siblings, he was so protective over them. Throughout Jack's childhood he was always on the go, despite his heart still not 100%, he never stopped. He was always in a rush to do something or be somewhere. Taking every toy apart to see how it worked, he was so inquisitive, asking me a million questions a day. He just wanted to learn. After separating from Jack's dad, we moved houses a few times. We still had so many adventures. I remember getting up one morning many times and saying to the kids, come on, let's go, not knowing where I was going with them, but ending up having the best days out with them. Whether it was to the coast, Peak District, or sometimes to London, we went everywhere. We went to Cornwall on holiday each year, and in the evenings we went on mystery tours in the car, ending up on a beach, watching the sunset. Jack loved photography and took so many beautiful pictures. We eventually moved to Loggerheads, and Jack by then had grown up and was able to go down the Burntwood alone on his mountain bike. He loved going out on adventures with his granddad. His nanny and granddad's house was only around the corner and he loved his nanny and granddad and spent many days with them just popping down to say hello. Jack was devastated when his nanny passed away. He came to help his granddad cut the lawns of this churchyard where his nanny is buried. But his granddad has since told me he just loved seeing how the lawn where was worked. Jack found out so much about engines. He knew everything about each car he was interested in, MG's being his favourite. When he was little, I used to take him to car showrooms and the staff working there were amazed at Jack's knowledge and specification of each car. He was only 10 at the time. Jack couldn't wait to drive and had his first lesson on his 17th birthday. He passed after a few lessons and bought his first black MG. Many a day he was out tinkering with it. And screen wash, wow, he was obsessed with it. I must have got five, through five litres a week in winter. After passing his driving test, Jack by then was shown a passion for motorbikes. I myself had passed my CBT and had a little Yamaha and Jack used to sit on it and say he wished he could have one. Eventually he saved his money as Jack did work so hard from the age of 16 starting at the range and then on to Garner's Garden Centre, Asda Wool Stanton, Keel Services, Starbucks, all while studying at Newcastle College. He saved and saved for his first motorbike and eventually bought one, a little black and white Honda which he loved. And really from that moment on, Jack became the Jack we all knew and loved. He was, in his, he was his happiest when sat on his bikes. He passed his CBT shortly after and he was then hardly at home. He couldn't wait for the next adventure he was planning. Sometimes he would just go out at nine at night, saying, just going for a spin, Mum. I worried every time he went on it, but I had a bike, so I couldn't say anything. And I also thought, for what Jack's had to endure in his short life, why shouldn't he be able to do what he wants? When Jack reached 18, he, he unfortunately had to undergo another open heart operation. But again, he did so with such bravery and courage. His upbeat outlook on life was amazing. Nothing held him back to pursue his dreams. I tell my children to always follow their dreams, and Jack truly did. Just, after, just a few months after his surgery, Jack bought his Rad Kawasaki. Even though he wasn't strong enough, or had even passed his Mod 1 or Mod 2, he just had it in the garage waiting. He worked hard and saved so he could take his big bike test. But once he had passed, Jack used that bike every day. I never knew where he was. He would always ring to tell me once he'd got there. And honestly, I'd worry, but thank goodness, he's living his dreams and he's happy. Jack had so many adventures on his bikes and made so many amazing friends. I can't believe, can't quite believe just how many people's hearts Jack had touched when he met them. 
but seeing all the bikers today who have come to say farewell, it's made me realise what he meant to all of you. But that was Jack. He always welcomed anyone, spoke to literally anyone, saw the good in everyone, never judged, never spoke unkindly, always there to lend a hand. He was the gentlest, kindest, loving soul, and I am the most proudest mum of him for being who he was. That fateful night, Jack was doing what he enjoyed most in the world, riding his motorbike, living the dream. He had overcome so many battles through his life, countless surgeries, procedures, fighting for life. But that night he didn't win the battle. And now I pray to God he is with his nanny and she is taking care of him, wrapping her arms around him. We all miss you, Jack, and love you with every ounce of our hearts. Your beautiful beaming smile will never be forgotten. Your passion for life I will carry on. You, are J you Jack, are an inspiration and legend. Ride free now, Jack. Sleep tight, God bless. Love you always and forever. For Jack, my son, there won't be a day that goes by that I won't think about you. I'm going to miss our conversations about cars that went long into the night. I used to smile when I saw your name pop up on a tax. We must have modified your car ten times over, probably more. I've spent I've spent many precious times with you over the years. I wish I could have more. You lived your life to the full, enjoying every minute, the places you went, all the friends that you've made, all the adventures that you went on. You must have had a blast, unbelievable. We are all gonna miss you, son, but none of us will never, ever forget you. You will live on in us all. We will enjoy life and each day like you did. I love you, son. I'm so proud of the man you became. Until we meet again, night, night, love, dad. Jack, you were that twinkling light that lit the darkest rooms. Your smile always made me smile. I am so proud of you. You accomplished your dreams of owning a motorbike and you lived to ride. You travelled miles across the country riding that bike. Even on rainy days you would get out and do what you loved. Half of the time I had no clue where you were. But at the end of the day I would hear the door unlock and a little hello would come out. No matter what life threw at you, you would just get back up and you just kept smiling. You never let anybody get to you or bring you down. As your younger sister, I look up to you of how confident and of how much of a kind person that you are. You are so brave, so outgoing and the happiest person I know. You made me smile, you made me smile on the days I couldn't and that is why you're my hero, Jack. I'm going to miss you so much and you are forever in my heart. I love you. Now, brother, can you proud me? What turned up for you? You rest up tight up there, son. Catch you later. See you out there soon, buddy. Ta -da. Good night, God bless you, son. Right, hi. Big meat. I'll leave for you. I'll leave for you, Jack. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers for having us all. Well. Ta -da. Ta -da.
It's going to waste out really. Well, that's what from day one. First time I ever met Jack was a couple of years back, back at the Raven. And uh, he was on his 125, his custom one that he had, his custom looking bike. And uh, never forget it because it came in and it was so loud. And I was with Roy at the time and we pointed at it and said Look how loud that thing was and straight away he couldn't wait to get over and come and see us and, and talk about his bike and he was absolutely made up with it and we were like I'm sure there's an hole in that exhaust uh, he just wasn't bothered at all he just got that look at him and it was I want to talk about my bike and it was just you could from day one I just thought absolutely lovely lad absolutely fantastic and yeah, the, the, the first time he the first time he turned up for Piggy's Riders to come and have a ride out with us, um, <laughs> he pulled up with Andy, and straight away he, he was a little bit on the shy side at first, but it didn't take him long. He, he come out of his shell, bouncing around as normal Jack. Couldn't wait to tell you all about his own bike and all the different things he's been up to. Uh, bless him. <laughs> Miss the kid so much. Um, and uh, Jack in one word for me would have to be the Joker because anybody on Piggy's Riders will all tell you the same if you'd lost your gloves if your jacket had gone missing you'd get on your bike, your keys were gone you wouldn't even have to look around to see who it was, you'd just turn around and that little snigger would be on his face <laughs> and he'd be laughing because he'd know darn well he, he did them just things like that, he, what a cracking kid, absolutely diamond, love him to bits. Um, do miss him, really do. All I want to say Jack is, mate, we could do with another thousand of you, we really could. I miss you every day mate, I'm going to miss you on every ride. In art, you'll be there, mate. You'll be with us, and uh, God bless your son. And I hope you're up there now. Well, you'll be up there now, looking down, laughing at me. That's what you'll be doing, because you know I don't do this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, good night, son. Then, ride high up there. Love you, son. Gonna miss you. Good night.